Hi you guys, so before we get into this video, I do want to start by apologizing for the lighting in this video. It's really harsh and only now that I'm editing did I realize that the camera was not focusing on me even for a second. It is unfocused, it is blurry. I'm sorry, I'll do better. Uh, if you prefer, you can listen to the audio podcast. Um, the link will be down below if you don't want to deal with the video quality. Otherwise, proceed with caution, you've been warned. But also, on a more serious note, I do want to note, um, put a content warning, trigger warning, and say that in this video I do talk about abuse and gender-based violence, and if at any point something is triggering to you, please um, feel free to click out, and yeah, without further ado, let's get into today's video. <laughs> Hello, it's Simply Spitzer here and welcome back to my channel, but also a very special welcome to those of you listening to the audio podcast, Simply Do The Work. So I feel like it's been a while since I just like sat down and chat with y'all. Like, I don't know, I just, I just took a couple of days off to like disconnect and just like, not disconnect, but like unplug from the world and just center myself. But then I've also been taking time to just reacquaint myself, conscientize myself to what's happening in the world. And specifically in our country, there's just there's a lot of mess. Like, I literally, I tried to make notes to sort of like make sense and like put everything in order. But I just, I, 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 I couldn't. I couldn't organize or just wrap my head around everything that's happening because it's mess and i feel like you can't make sense of mess like if it don't make no sense sometimes it doesn't make sense because it shouldn't make sense if that makes sense i said makes sense a lot um i think okay before i get into this video let's just get the admin the housekeeping out of the way if you need to my channel and you're not yet subscribed please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every time i upload a new video um i don't know i feel like for the next couple of weeks i don't know how long i'm going to continue making this type of commentary videos um maybe you know a reaction might come soon or a vlog might come soon i don't know we'll see how i'm feeling but right now this is what we're doing this is what we're doing um also if you listen to the podcast depending on which platform you're listening on please do subscribe follow and if possible rate review and share the podcast um okay before i get into the what i actually want to talk about in this video i do want to address a comment i got on my last video so my last video was titled let's not i believe it's let's not praise celebrities and influencers for the bare minimum and this comment, number one, had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the content of the video. Rather, they were rather coming for my aesthetic and like my content in general. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on like, you know, the intricate details of the comment. But basically, to summarize what the person said, they basically were complaining of the video quality and saying that without proper quality, it just, it doesn't keep viewers engaged. And then they were telling me I need to... Um, hop on trends and um, it was just a mess like mess and what I do want to say is first of all if you don't like what you see you're free to go right now this person I did actually respond to them and say listen I don't appreciate the condescending tone in your comment and they just said oh take it or leave it it's up to you and that for me showed an issue of arrogance like I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm not rude. I'm just, I keep it real. I keep it 100. It's like, no, you're not being real. You're just being rude. You're just being mean. You're not actually bringing value into the person's life you're speaking to. You're just making them feel bad because that's genuinely how I felt. I felt bad. Like, it really just brought up a lot of insecurities. And if you followed my channel like since last I think last I did make a video of how it can be discouraging because you're seeing other people getting all these views you see people you know doing things for clout and I wanted I want my channel to bring more than just that you know I want it to be more than just hopping on trends and another irony the fact that in that video I specifically critique influencer culture and people hopping on trends and now this person in my comments is telling me I need to hop on trends 
basically, I think the if you wanna like the moral or the context of all of this is think before you say things to people. Like sometimes while meaning people will give critiques in terms of in the name of constructive criticism when really you're not actually building the person up. You're actually you're breaking them down. Um, it's not necessarily about your intentions, but it's about your impact. Sometimes, yes, you meant well, but what you did, did ended up not coming off the way you wanted. And so also if someone does correct you and say, hey, listen, you shouldn't be talking like this. Or, hey, I don't appreciate this. Try to see it from their perspective, you know. Um, before you just, yeah, before you comment, can we please just be respectful and kind? And also read the room, read the room. I feel like if that I got that comment on like a vlog or a reaction or some other random video, I would have been fine. But now it's like, sir, we talk about serious issues here and you're going to come at me for aesthetic? Aesthetic? Please. Like, also another thing I find ironic is that the video before that I was speaking about finding my voice and being comfortable on the space and how YouTube has really become a safe space for me to freely be myself and then I get another video telling me no what you're doing is like like the video after the town comments and says stop what you're doing it's a mess it's just <sighs> that was a messy um intro uh like <laughs> how do I go from that into what I actually want to talk about for this video slash podcast um so about two weeks ago was it two weeks ago it's yeah the concept of space and time is kind of lost on me but yeah just over a week ago i remember posting my whatsapp status that the church's silence on black issues and black lives matter and what's happening right now is hurting my spirit like it really was affecting my spirit as someone who grew up in the church as someone who you know, holds Christian ideals close and dear to my heart. And to see churches either, you know, doing poor responses or not responding at all, like just ignoring as if it's not happening. It really, it, it, you know, those types of things really do a number on you and your faith. It really makes you question and like, like, how do I fit into all of this, you know? And by the grace of God, you know, one of the churches that I'm involved in, actually, you know, they dedicated a service, you know, speaking about it and they raised some valid points like I can literally show these are all the notes. Y'all can't see nothing. If you're watching the video, you can't see. Um y'all can probably hear those pages doing the things because this microphone is so sensitive. Anyway, um yeah, so they spoke about it and you know, they also raised some really compelling arguments and issues you know because i was listening to a podcast the other day god god is great the podcast check it out check out her youtube channel god is great highly recommend and one of the guests on the podcast said as a christian you can't just take the love the power the mercy and the grace that you get from jesus christ but negate all the harm that the church as an institution has caused the homophobia, the sexism, the racism, you know, if you think of in terms of how Christianity came to the continent of Africa through colonization, through slave trading, and how that narrative has sort of been twisted into this white savior, you know, a lot of times when you read about colonization, they'll say things like, oh yeah, we brought, um, they brought civilization into these communities, it's like, um, or they'll say stuff like, they discovered Africa or they discovered the Americas. It's like you can't discover a place where people were already living, where a society was already established with its own principles and values. This narrative of a white savior that has been basically ingrained and fluidly allowed to exist within not only the context of history, but even in today, it needs to stop because we need to understand that lives were destroyed till today. We are still suffering because of what, what began generations, hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. And where I'm going with this is basically it. Now, okay, let me just say before I carry on, carry on any further, I'm not questioning God. I'm not, this isn't me attacking religion or spirituality, but rather it's me you know, I was confronted with this of the church. 
how do I say this? The church and Christians a lot of the time seem more concerned with the death of Jesus and what it means for their souls and the afterlife. And they don't pay attention to how Jesus lived while he was still on earth. If we look, um, the church likes speaking about let's be anti-cultural or we need to be counter-cultural or we're not from this world but we're in this world and you know that is all true but I feel like the problem isn't necessarily the messaging although church does have some toxic messaging but that's a different conversation but rather the approach you know if you want to be spreading the love of Jesus then if I as a black person walk into a white church I shouldn't feel uncomfortable because that has happened okay now I'm, I'm speaking as someone who has existed in different church spheres or different sect different denominations that's 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 the terminology I guess the different denominations um, I've been in multiracial I've been in you know black only I've also been in churches where I was one of few white people and trust me it's sometimes you in those situations you feel like you're black first and a Christian after it's almost as if the love of Jesus applies to everyone in the room except for you and even if you just look at the like in terms of the messaging you know growing up I was seeing images of a white Jesus a lot of the animated or even real life action um, stories Bible stories and they were made into movies featured white characters that like there are people today who genuinely believe that Jesus was white they believe that as a fact and the thing is if you're white that messaging is not problematic to you at all it's like oh yeah Jesus looks like me he came to die for me it all makes sense but if you look like me and you're getting that messaging it's sort of it goes back to how the constant messaging that we're given which is wrong by the way like we should not be subscribing to this is that whiteness is equal to betterness you know that is why white people felt entitled to colonize they felt entitled to take black people as slaves to basically you know exert power on these people because they saw themselves and some do still see themselves as better than and girl this has gone so all over the place like i keep saying and the point the point but i don't get to the point i think you know if you're a christian i feel like churches this is the time this is the area where we need to rise up and stand because if you look at G another thing jesus one of the reasons why if you look at the context of you know what jesus came to do when he was here on earth and you know his entire life story in terms of the historical context Jesus was crucified for creating political unrest. Jesus was literally shaking the table for the social political climate of the time. Jesus was mixing with Gentiles, you know, Gentiles being non Jews. Jesus was talking to women as if they were actually people and not property. And that's actually a point I want to get to later on in this. Jesus, you know, there are people who are against protesting, but forgetting that there is literally. A verse where Jesus basically you could say ransacked the church for lack of better words please don't take everything I say like verbatim take it with a grain of salt because there's only so much I can you know discuss in this type of setting but basically is that we need to actually do the work I mean it's, it doesn't just help to just say oh, oh I'll be I'll be praying for you like I appreciate the prayers but also sometimes like you know you can keep your prayers if all i'm getting from you is prayers keep it you know christians whether you're black white to us regardless of your belief systems even if you're not christian we everyone has a role to play to stand up and do something about what is happening about the world we're living fighting against the oppressive systems that continue continue to affect people's lives because i think the problem is the church sometimes it sees itself as being in a bubble and that the rest of the world happening outside like in terms of the whole we are in the world not from the world not realizing that the social political climate of the world determines or it does have an impact on religious spheres or within a religious context within the institution and things until churches 
and Christians and congregants and leaders come to terms with the issues, how the social political climate affects the inner workings of the church, then it also won't be possible for them to go out and to actually spread the love of Jesus, which is actually, you know, it isn't about just, you know, all of us secluding ourselves and segregating ourselves, which is what you see in a lot of churches, but oh, I could I could go on. I could go on. This could honestly be its own video and you know i'll probably make one in the future but yeah that's just something i need to get off my chest there Ooh. okay girl let's just breathe because i still have quite a few things i need to get through it's like this, this is gonna be a long one um so yeah there's that you know the church and how i've just been having that internal conflict and also just seeing just evaluating and seeing how the church is responding and you know that it's kind of like you know whether they're responding or not like the silence also says a lot and another group of people who have been quite silent as of lately is men in terms of the gender-based violence issue in the country in our country south africa i think believe it was last night you know i i posted my whatsapp status that my advocacy for black cis head men is tired it really is because you realize that a lot of these black men do not want equality no they want the same privilege that white people currently have and it's kind of like you can't expect us to tear down white supremacy for you but leave all these other oppressive systems in place because that's the thing also which I think we need to come to terms with is that all these oppressive systems allow each other to coexist. You've got white supremacy, you've got the patriarchy, all of these things, racism, tribalism, sexism, all these things coexist because of each other. Like you want to break down one, you have to break down the others because of intersectionalities, because of how black women and, um, people of the LGBTQ plus community are still marginalized even within their race, within their ethnicities. And it's so... <laughs> the other day, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and saying, the same black men who get upset and all up in arms when a white person says, but all lives matter, will turn around when we're talking about gender-based violence and say, but not all men. And it's like, you completely it's like how you can you have the range to see why it's wrong for a white person to say hashtag all lives matter when we're speaking about black lives matter but then when we're talking about how men are you know violating abusing and murdering women and children suddenly it's like i don't know you lose the brain cells you honestly oh if you're watching the video, I need to apologize. The sun is moving, so it's causing this weird lighting. If that's an issue, um, feel free to leave. Don't leave a rude comment down below. And I think something that needs to happen when we're having such conversations, and some, this is what I got from church, actually, is you need to recognize who you are in the conversation. Recognize your biases recognize your privilege that's what needs to happen whenever we're having these types of conversations whether it be on racism gender-based violence recognize who you are in the conversation and then don't try to silence other people i feel like that's the thing i feel like what a lot what, what a lot of men are doing is that they're just gonna be like when they say but not all men they just want like not all men are like that so stop talking just shh, this is an issue it's basically gaslighting 101 and also we need to discuss the issue of victim blaming in these cases women were are being murdered at an astronomical rate if you look at this, the statistics the rate at which women are being murdered in this country is the same as countries that are like in active war and people still had the odd someone had the audacity to say what did Tsekhofato Pule do to that you know caused for her death like what did she do that made a man decide to stab her and hang her while she's eight months pregnant I, it honestly leaves me speechless it really 
at this point, I don't even know what needs to happen. You know, it's kind of like my primary intention whenever I make these videos and these podcast episodes is not necessarily to present the answers, but I'm just I'm just hoping to start a conversation. Because a lot of people aren't speaking about this. Like if you think of when George Floyd's um, murder went viral, you know, the whole world was up in arms. And I don't want to take away anything from that. You know, like black men, period, we shouldn't be dying like that. Um, no one deserves to be murdered for like, like, you know, there's no way of justifying why, you know, black men are dying at the rate that they're dying at the hands of police. But at the same time, it's like the erasure of black women, of, you know, black trans women, of the queer community when it comes to these struggles. We got Breonna Taylor. No one is coming up for Breonna Taylor the same way people came up for George Floyd. And Breonna Taylor, I believe that case happened before um, George Floyd. Hopefully by the time this video is up, more people will know about Breonna Taylor. But basically, she was shot like eight times in her house. You, you you see why the whole victim blaming or, or putting it on women to, I don't know, act respectably or, you know, to be safe. I, I don't know what you expect these women to do. Because literally just for breathing, just for existing, they're being killed and murdered. And so I just... Until all black... Like, if your Black Lives Matter excludes women excludes the entire lgbtq plus community i can't i cannot be a part of that if all you want is the same privilege as white people then clearly we we we, we are not on the same side we're not playing for the same team also what you don't people don't realize is that even the oppressors actually benefit from these systems being dismantled if the system of patriarchy isn't um, put on a pedestal the way it is then men will feel less pressure to always be the provider men will have less pressures in terms of having in terms of how they operate and move. men will feel free will be freed to express their vulnerability and their femininity because this is the problem yeah this is i think we're going somewhere with this men have issue with the feminine the feminine is seen as lesser than and so that is why anyone who deviates from this hyper masculine culture that's why women are looked down upon that is why if you want to insult another man it's either you call him a woman or you call him gay or homosexual that is how you emasculate a man basically no one should see themselves as better or superior to another whether it be because of race whether it be because of their gender or even tribe tribalism is a major issue here in south africa and to us all of africa it's not even not even unique i'm sure all over the world and the apartheid near apartheid here in south africa also heavily contributed to that you know before there was racism there was tribalism and if you think about it how the apartheid government segregated people not only by their skin color or their race or their ethnicity, but also according to tribes. How you find, for example, KwaZulu Natal has a lot of Zulu speaking people. Um, the Eastern Cape is Kosa dominated. You know, you've got Sutu dominated areas. And so it created this unrest between black people which they fed on, which was kind of what they, it's basically the whole system of categorizing people, putting them on a hierarchy and saying, okay, I'm better than you because of this and that. And it's also why if we also want to, you know, dismantle the systems of racism and white supremacy, we also need to talk about the issues of tribalism. Now, the reason why I also actually bring this up is because of, excuse me, a tweet that someone made that was Based, that was very offensive and rude to vendor speaking people to the vendor tribe and the most mind-boggling thing to me is there are people who did not see the issue in that there are people who said that joke is funny how is it funny to call an already marginalized 
a minority group unnecessary look i get it net there are certain jokes it's like that's, that's the thing with jokes there is a thin line there is that line between it being funny and just being rude and the thing is if we have to now explain to people this is this is the mind boggling point to me it's like why do i have to literally explain and break down to you why this is offensive or why this is problematic or why we shouldn't be saying this that is the issue and that's kind of why i find myself at a loss for words like literally this entire video is kind of like why do i need to why does it need to be explained to people to me it almost it's kind of like it makes sense kind of like okay racism oh okay but look we also got the issues of tribalism also the patriarchy you know gender-based violence like all these issues how they all intersect and how they you know affect different people differently and the problem is i feel like we're more interested in creating this false sense of unity and the thing is unless we actually are brave enough to have these conversations to actually tell the truth as it is because what happened, you know what ends up happening is we have this false sense of unity, this false sense of security, and then a crisis happens. Death, the death of George Floyd, um, women and children continually being murdered and abused, people tweeting these offensive remarks, you know, all of these crises happening, and that's when the false unity that's when it shatters because that's when we clearly see the lines of the, that's when m lines of us versus them get bold that's when it becomes evident that no no we're not equal because that's the thing i feel like people just want to automatically just wake up and press the equality button and we're done without actually doing the work that's also kind of why like the podcast is named simply do the work because i feel like yeah we, we 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 spend time having you know we spend time just being like oh but guys um let's just not focus on things that divide us but let's focus on what brings us together and you have people living there are genuinely people who like i didn't realize this until now but people genuinely living in a post-racial world people genuinely living People think, oh no, I'm not racist, I'm not sexist, I'm not homophobic, so I'm good, you know. It's those people who will be like, but not all men, like, you find, you know, it's the nice guy who's like, oh, but I don't do any of that, but it's like, okay, but yeah, you don't do any of that, but you do realize that in your silence, in your complacency, you are actually feeding into those systems. And that is the, it is the point that we are trying to get across to people that just, it's kind of like how when black people say just being not racist is enough you have to be anti-racist but then black men can't see how that applies to other issues it's just it is mind-boggling i'm i'm generally at a loss for words because i just feel like everything is just it's mess upon mess upon mess every single day i open to it i check my timeline i'm just seeing more mess and i think the problem is now a lot of us we, 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 we've gotten desensitized it's become normalized i think maybe that's why we end up having to literally break it down to people because to them it's like but isn't this the way it's always been and it's kind of like why are we settling for the way things are when this isn't the way things are supposed to be in the church in our everyday lives in our family dynamics why are we settling for this when things not only can be better they should be better they have to be better like we can't just settle for any of this like oh i've gone all riled up and i've currently been recording for like almost 30 minutes so i'm at a loss for words i i am genuinely at a loss for words you guys um I don't know how to end this. And you know what? I shouldn't have to end this. This isn't the end. It might be the end of this video. It might be the end of this podcast. But this is just the beginning. You know, the other day I was actually thinking to myself because 
there was a week where I thought I just I was I was like, oh, so aren't you doing too much with all of you know all the petitions you're posting, all of the uh, quotes and tweets and whatever? And then I just felt a voice in me saying, no, you're not doing too much. You're not doing enough. To be honest, even if I did more than I could, it seemed as if nothing I ever do will be enough. But I'm not going to settle for that. Because if each and every person listening to this, each and every person on this planet did what they could, did what they should, we could make some real change. And that is why just being complacent and settling cannot be for me. Nope. Sorry. Another thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is, I've been saying I want to end this, but this is something I want to talk about. I feel like while you're still alive, people don't care for you. Like, there are people who who literally call George Floyd a sacrificial lamb. Why is it that people have to die before their eyes, before others, you know, open their eyes to the truth? Why is it that women need to literally die before people are like, oh my goodness, there's an issue here. Oh, the toxic masculinity fight for me while i'm still alive can we fight why do you realize that we failed these women we failed these children we failed the lgbtq plus community we have failed them and i'm saying we because i do not see myself above this i'm not speaking from a place of moral superiority we need to fight now for these people while they're still alive because once they're gone You've already failed them. And it shouldn't take the extremes for action to be taken. It's in the little things. It's in the microaggression. It's in the little joke. These jokes aren't just such as ha 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 little laughs. No, no, no. These jokes, they basically shape how a person thinks, their lens, how they operate in this world, and leads to the death of people. That's the thing. People are literally dying. And still some of y'all don't care. Still, it's still just whatever. Like, once again, I'm at a loss for words. Um, I'm at a loss for words. Um, as I said, this isn't the end. Um, the conversation needs to continue. I hope you're having these conversations with people, you know, the people in your everyday life. Because what matters most, it isn't what you do on the public stage. That's the thing that people fail to realize. But when no one is looking, what do you do? What do you say? What do you think? And so, on that note, thank you so much for listening and watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe. And yeah, and also, also feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Until we see each other again, until we hear from me again, I love you guys so much. Bye, guys.